Today on the Mike O'Mara Show. It was a weird energy as soon as we walked in because my mom didn't tell us that my dad had arrived. And I walk in, my mom had all the lights dimmed low. I was like, <laughs> I said, Mom. Darth Vader has I said, arrived. Mom, are you okay? And she's like, tu, 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 tu papa ha llegado. And I said, Dad's home? And I said, uh, Oh, now this all makes sense. You're in mourning from your freedom. <laughs> <laughs> and I also was shocked that you have to go under for a cola. I thought you could stay awake. You can do you, a twilight. I ha- I've had them both. I've had them when uh, they, uh, you know, I've had them when I was uh, conscious, and I've had them when uh, uh, I've been put out. Recently, all the colonoscopies I have, and I have one every week. People don't realize that about me. Uh, they part of your they regimen. knock you out. Well, that's why part we moved the regimen. show start time over the summer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when you turn, first of all, sir, this is what you deserve to be called, <laughs> sir. Sir. You know, sir. God <laughs> bless you. <laughs> there you, you right go. Now. When you are sixty-two years old, you have paved the way. You don't. You don't have to do anything anymore if you don't want to. You understand? <laughs> I mean, you have seen. Would you rebook the CT changes. for a future? Uh, uh, he's already yeah. rebooked on the show. Every other Monday. Bro. All that and more. The Mike O'Mara Show starts now. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Mike O'Mara Show. Enjoying our second decade of the show that has become a daily routine for thousands of listeners in great places like Telluride, Colorado. Let me see if I... Te... Tegusi... Tegusi... <laughs> Tegusigalba. Tegusigalba, Honduras. Exactly. That's exactly Tegucigalpa. right. Tegusigalpa. Yeah. Tegusigalpa, Honduras. Keystone, South Dakota. Santanella, California. Mays, Kansas. Is that named after the corn? No, it's named after the disc jockey. <laughs> <laughs> Mays. Uh, Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, all of you checking in, we appreciate that. Uh, welcome to uh, the Mike O'Mara Show. Um, full disclosure and full honesty right now. Oh, by the way, we have a, a wonderful comedian that's going to be joining us in a few minutes here. Uh, Clayton C.T. Uh, Thomas, and uh, he's on tour right now uh, with Martin Lawrence, and he's going to be appearing in Baltimore. We'll bring him in in a second. Um, I got to tell you, I, I am uh, I'm fighting the urge to really want to F off this week. I uh, I can't help myself. I'm I'm finding myself unmotivated for for even this wonderful job that I have. I I vegetated for a good chunk of the uh, weekend, and I look forward to more vegetating this week. Even with the these Thanksgiving two holiday. shining faces on the other side of the Zoom no. call. I have no doubt that as we get rolling and we get into the uh, the show today, uh, you know, my energy level will, will come up. But I, I this is such an anomaly for me where I where I really come in here and kind of let go a sigh. Yeah. Like time to make the donuts sigh. I normally have a uh, like getting up and getting ready to go is for everybody on a Monday kind of bleh. Sure. But. Usually when I'm at this stage, like talking to you guys right before I come in, I don't have that holiday mode. You're probably which, which, a which, product I, of your environment. Is anybody around you moving yes, and grooving? Yes, my daughter and her, her boyfriend, Connor, have uh, come down from okay. uh, from East That's and they it. are here. See? So we're just in yesterday, it was just bad, bad eating and, uh, you know, and they're, yeah, they're all lounging around out there. My if, son's off of school and, uh, you know, it's if, like... Yes. If my family were home, like yours is home. Yes. And and I can't speak for our audience, but even the most diligent and work and and the most, I guess, the 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 part of us that are workaholics seems to feel out of place when everybody around us isn't working. Yeah, the right. amazing sleep machine is home and in my home. And so you've got your progeny. So that's them, a, yeah. everybody's effing it's off, normal. and I want to yeah. have fun. But we're here to uh, serve. I don't we're feel here that to, way. And you know, and we're another man serve. that's working, a man who's working yes. harder yes. Uh, than we are is uh, is C.T. Thomas, Clayton C.T. Thomas, who is going to be appearing uh, to Thanksgiving shows. Let's bring uh, Clayton in here, C.T. Tickets are available at BaltimoreComedy.com. Uh, he is a Detroit native. CT is a 16-year comedy veteran, winning over audiences worldwide. And uh, for the past four years, there he is, uh, CT has been on tour with the <laughs> Martin Loris Lit AF Comedy Tour. Did I get that right, CD? You got CT? it perfect, man. It's okay. perfect. 
I with Martin uh, Lawrence, dude. We just wrapped up the tour. Feeling incredible. Glad to be here. How are you guys doing this morning? Good. We're doing great. We're talking about, uh, I'll be honest with you, CT, I came in today, and I've got uh, one of my daughters who came uh, down from D.C., and uh, they're all kind of lounging on the couch right now, <laughs> and I, I'm normally a pretty motivated guy. I'm normally, I have this uh, incredible desire just to F off today and just do, uh, do not, I don't know what's wrong with me, but, uh, you know, you, the show must go on. You know that, right? CT? Let me tell you something, man. The fact that they're at home chilling right now and you are doing work lets me further know that they need to switch positions with what you're doing right now. That's yes, support me. <laughs> support the me. The freedom Show. that you should have just by yes. being at home. I'm First 60, of all, I'm when 62. you pay all the bills, you're <laughs> right. 62 years old and you paying I'm, all the bills and you still got to work? Nah, no, 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 <laughs> no. no. I, now, I, I don't pay their bills. They are on their own. They're Mike's doing their thing. Mike's been married three times. Three, why did, first, now, why, let's did, back, let's why did you immediately steamroll into that fact well, for our guests? You have, you, it's not like you've been working this whole time to be able to amass some sort of fortune. You had to give He's away 62. half of it. He's 62. Half of it. <laughs> Listen, half what do you think happens when you get – when you turn – first of all, sir, this is what you deserve to be called. <laughs> sir, sir. sir. God <laughs> bless you. <laughs> there you, you right go. Now. When you are 62 years old, you have paved the way. You don't You don't have to do anything anymore if you don't want to. You understand me? You have seen Would you rebook CT changes. for a future uh, – uh, he's already – rebooked on the show every other monday Bro, he'll be at your I'm house you, on man. thursday mike <laughs> mike you have you have seen the change from vhs to dvd alone that alone <laughs> should get you some days off you understand me you have seen cable be created you don't right. you don't have to work you deserve to be praised on a daily basis <laughs> i used i used a cell phone as large as a samsonite suitcase <laughs> Do you did. remember that phone? The phone that was a brick that you held on your yes. phone and you could only dial like this. Now you can just touch screen. Yeah, and, and only a few pe only a few people had it mm -hmm. back uh, back in well, the Mike, day. Well, Mike, you had a car that. phone that was like built into your car, didn't you? Well, I mean, you you could get them, but yeah. once again, I'm saying when they were that big, they were also pretty exclusive sure, uh, yes. for people. Yeah. You know, and they technically were, every car phone was built into the car because it's the, built it's built the car into phone. the car. But, <laughs> yes. But with that said, I'm still on the fact that they're at home chilling and you are at work at 62. Let me tell you something. If I'm not done with my entire professional life by 47, then I have a problem. You understand me? You, you know, uh, I have to give you uh, your plugs here because the uh, you're going to be talking about hardworking. You're doing two shows uh, and you're going to be in Baltimore. And I want to make sure we've got this right here for the uh, you're going to be at da, da, da. God. They're so big. These bios here. Are you at the, the Baltimore Comedy Baltimore Factory? Baltimore Comedy Factory. Ba I'm Baltimore Comedy. Show, 730. Uh, we're going to see. If we if we end up adding a second show, it's up to the to the to the fair people of Baltimore. Seven thirty Wednesday night, day before Thanksgiving. I want the family there. I want to because a lot of people will say, "Hey, uh, do you mind if I bring my aunt and my uncle and my cousins?" I'm like, "Yes, I want everybody. I don't just want one person." That's perfect. So. <laughs> well, the Wednesday night uh, before Thanksgiving idea. is yeah, the uh, at least it was until I became elderly. Mm -hmm. uh, is <laughs> Right? Remember the party night? Oh, we used to, remember when I, party remember night. when I owned the bar yeah, and we had a big night on Wednesday night is the night to party. Also, that's the that's night, night to go out. College Absolutely. Kids, college kids all come back together, you know, their yeah. first night back. Then that's also, a great night to party. for a comedy show, you don't have to ditch your parents. Bring them along. Yeah, bring them along. You know what it is? When you, here's the thing. Whether you're in college, whether you got the night before Thanksgiving to cook, there are some people who ain't going to be cooking. If you're not in the kitchen, <laughs> you got to be at the show. You understand me? If you ain't got no responsibilities, plug yeah. in that turkey, plug it at ham i need you to be at the baltimore comedy factory 7 30 wednesday night you understand? listen i have to tell you something that uh i was watching a lot of your stuff online and Thank you, uh, man. and and uh ct's got a uh just us league podcast as yes. well uh, but uh, you've done t so much uh stand up i mean there are really people that are are just natural i think your stand up is really really uh you know fantastic the, but what, what kicked me over the top where i I was because uh, I mean, if, if Rob will come to me. It's the way it works. He said, uh -huh. "Would you be interested?" I said, "Let me let me go on and check it out." And that's normally a process for me. I actually yeah. go to see you know uh, you know not being as familiar with your work as I should be, and I go and I look <laughs> and I love the stand up. But the moment that just I immediately called Rob back. I said, "Please put him on this show." Well, you was are, it because you already getting a Christmas present? So this what, this is this, this is what did it for me because this is balls. This to me is you're on stage, and I think. I think when that you're going over better than 
you think you're going because I hear mm. the audience, but you have obviously been part of a few guys that have come out before you, and you're not getting the reaction that you <laughs> want from from the audience. And I have done this when you're out because there is, as you know, in the yeah. in the world of performance, this love hate mm. line, and you are just kind of going off on the audience, and it was so funny. Crowd work is the whole thing <laughs> where you're just sitting there, and they're just kind of yeah. What about about this guy this guy sitting there with his <laughs> arms folded and you're just going off on these people i love that that's just so real you know i mean it's what i like about uh in his later years george carlin about oh, yeah. just the you know harnessing and doing it in a funny way that anger yeah. where you've got these people that have no business being at a comedy show they're usually <laughs> sitting in the uh the right. front row i could not yeah. do what you do because i would be always you know sitting there i do two hours with one guy i said Yo, here's you the funny in- thing you're already hilarious like if you would have told me that you were a veteran as well, I would have believed it because here's the thing. First of all, thank you for the high praise. It's, it's massive, man. I love as a comedian when I perform, I love to make every show its own show. And what that means is this is alive. I'm here in person. I want you guys to walk away with some inside jokes that we create tonight. The energy mm-hmm. that we make tonight is for us. This cannot be duplicated. You won't see this performance on television because this is for us. So that particular night, man, I'm not having it because, you know, people be acting funny. I don't want nobody. You know which one I'm talking. You know the clip I'm talking about, right? You know uh, where you say it was so it was so real. (laughs) And I would just love that. And, uh, you know, it's it's just fun. No, as far as stand up is concerned, um, I don't know. There are two things I, I, I can tell a story. And mm-hmm. some people do do stand up like that, but having the the rhythm and having the temperament for it, and being able to just weave in and out. I've never, uh, you know, I've emceed a few, uh, you know, back in the day. God, talk about being old. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, emceed a few comedy shows, but stand up is something I've always had mad respect for, simply because Man. of uh, how how hard it is uh, to do. Uh, and and it's a different animal. And I don't think anybody that has never been around, uh, stand-up comedians or knows about it really gets just how, how cool it is to be able to do that. But both is, yeah, go ahead. I first, man, even hearing you say that I would even, I would love number one for you guys to come Wednesday night, but I want you to get up. Before I go up, I want to hear a five-minute story in front of my audience. Because, first of all, you already have me laughing just (laughs) talking about your daughters. Like, I want to hear a true (laughs) classic Mike story on stage. It's open invitation if you want it. I'm not going to pressure you. But I want to hear some fire because I know you got something Uh, to say. uh, That's very, uh, you know, it's wonderful. And Mike loves this. So you're kissing his ass. It's perfect. No, man, it's real talk. Mike and I... Hey, and he's just being kind, you son of a bitch. For 10 years. The, the last five years, we haven't uh-huh. seen Mike more than twice. Yeah, he lives wow. in Florida. Oh, you're talking, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah. about me coming yeah, up to yeah. so, Well, I was oh, going to mention that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's I'm not sorry. so bad for Mike being home. Uh, We're good. Yeah, it's, it's, Where are you now? Where are you now, CT? Where Are you in right Baltimore now, yet? No. So here's the funny thing, man. So I'm still in L.A. right now. I get on a flight uh, tomorrow morning. Here's the crazy part, man. When I'm on a plane, and I don't know if you guys are like this, I don't like the aisle seat. I'm a window seat guy, right? Okay. Me too. However, Me too. when I get that aisle seat, there's a couple things that are going to be changed. Number one, ain't nobody going to the bathroom unless y'all done went before we sat down. Yes, sir. <laughs> ain't no reading lights coming on. We, we are sitting still until this flight is over because I had a situation. They put me in the aisle on my last flight, and then the, the girl in the middle and the guy on the window kept trying to get up and go to the bathroom. I say, look now. Y'all had this opportunity before we took off. Now, I asked y'all, did y'all want to get up? Y'all keep on getting up. Ain't nobody getting up for the rest of this flight. Now. I'm daddy you, when I get on a plane. Can you sleep on a plane? Can you? Are you able to sleep I, when you get on a plane? This is my secret, man. So I, I prefer getting on the first thing smoking in the mornings, right? So Me I'll too. stay up all night, and then I'll be up for that 5 a.m. flight, get on the plane, and I go right to sleep. Mm. Unless... I get that aisle seat, and then I'm wide awake because they bumping you with that cart. I, the the aisle, I, I would, I would, uh, as big as I am, I'd, I'd, I'd probably take the middle seat rather than the you aisle seat. You want the middle? I'm talking about. Well, no, I, I prefer the window seat. But I mean, yes, if absolutely. you if you give me a choice between the aisle, I'm a phobic flyer. So oh. even though I fly all the time, uh, yeah. or I used to fly all the time before I came to a uh, assisted living community down here. <laughs> Wait, I, hold uh, on a second. 
You're in an no. assisted living community. No, no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, oh. I'm kidding. I, I'm kidding. I'm you still moved working. It to I still do. This. Yeah, I, I, it is not 55. There are children that live in there, and I'm a father. I have an eight year old son. Uh, nice. So I'm, uh, you know, and and that's that's it. No, I like I don't like the lack of control, and the aisle seat is mm. more uh, not being able to even see the window, and mm. I'm freaked out uh, by that. And I wish you luck with uh, what I'm seeing in the news as far as travel. I think you're going yeah, Baltimore uh, to. LA, you should be fine with that, but yeah. they uh, they have a pilot shortage. That's what I heard yesterday. Every local news show is trying to terrify us right now as far as yeah. shortages for stuff for Thanksgiving, shortages mm-hmm. if you're traveling. I heard that. I have no idea well, what it's The reason, Mike, true. there's no pilots is they're all out looking for cranberries, and they can't report to work. <laughs> That's the problem. Okay. All right. Yo, these all right. pilots, I man, I can't believe it's a shortage because every flight that I get on, you get that super long-winded pilot. It's like, hey, everybody we are uh, heading out to uh, Baltimore this morning. If everybody could just sit down and uh, buckle up. I'm like, fam, this is not a club. I'm not trying to hear the DJ right now. I just want to get in the air. Let's get to where we're going. I don't want to hear this long summary of everything going on. So uh, you go to Baltimore and then your home base is uh, Los Angeles. Is that where you're yes, uh, based out of right now? Based in and- L.A. You know the the tour with uh, with Martin Lawrence has gone really really well for you guys. Yeah. Uh, did COVID screw you up in any way when you were you running know what's around the crazy, country, man? So this is the wild part. So right at the beginning of the shutdowns of everybody starting to stay home and flights were getting canceled, I was on set. Right, I was filming a, a TV show on CBS called All Rise, and literally as I'm wrapping my scene. I have to get on a flight in about two hours to go to Florida. So the director is like, hey, CT, listen, man, uh, great job. But, uh, you know, you might want to check and see if the show's still going on because they're canceling. I say, listen, man, <laughs> I appreciate your concern, but this is 20,000 people, brother. We They're not going to just cancel a 20,000 seat show the day before. Come on, man. But thank you so much for your concern. I said it really <laughs> cocky, right? So I leave set. I called the tour manager because I'm like, let me just be safe. And, you know, just like, hey, man, I'm about to get on the plane. I'm leaving set right now. He's like, uh, no, nobody called you? I said, no, 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 nobody <laughs> called me, call me for what? He was like, yeah, so um, the show's canceled, man, all this COVID stuff. I say, if I didn't call you, who would have told me? <laughs> just in the arena by myself in another state? So it definitely screwed us up. Wow. Oh, wow. But, but then it, uh, you know, the thing with, I remember back in June, I was talking, I was traveling back in June mm-hmm. and we had that lull when we thought we were at the finish line. And then, yeah. uh, and then it came back, mm-hmm. and now uh, I think you're going to do really uh, well at uh, the Baltimore Comedy Factory simply because uh, I get the sense that people are ready in the, to get in out. the entire. Yeah. 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 Even though out. we're not where we should be, yeah. uh, and and we but you know we're we, in mass. We went to comedy. We've we've been to comedy clubs. Sure, we're in mass. You've been, you did yeah, you did going. during COVID. You yeah. went to uh, a few comedy yes, clubs sure. uh, with that. Well, not even. Uh, I mean, this is like a month ago. I went. Like this is people are going you back. Go? Uh, the, the improv, right? DC oh, improv, nice. right on the corner here. You yeah. played the improv, it's, haven't you? Yeah, man, I've been there before. It, it's it's special now because, like you said, people are wanting to come out. Outside of people wanting to come out, last June, first of all, let's just talk about the elephant in the room. We thought it was going to last two weeks. That's what they told us. They said two weeks, yeah, and yep, we I back out in these streets. Just don't touch your face, we, you'll be okay. Right? Don't mm-hmm. touch your face, you'll be okay. We have been in the house a year and a half. I didn't even get the memo that we could come out when we could come out. I just saw people outside. <laughs> I said, I thought we were supposed to be inside. They said, no, 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 we free again. I said, we free again. <laughs> Nobody tells me anything is what I'm trying to get to y'all. <laughs> so when you were touring with uh, with Martin uh, around uh, the country, how many, uh, w- tell me about that show. What was that show? How many comedians would be on that uh, oh, on man. that show? I, uh, so, I mean, it was... Um, y- so for the tour, it because it fluctuates lineups, right? So you got myself, you got the legendary Martin Lawrence. We're talking Ricky Smiley, Adele Givens, um, D. Ray Davis, and then we would do a different lineup. It would also be Bruce Bruce. It'd be Benji Brown. It'd be um, uh, B. 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 Simone. It would also be Chico Bean. It's it's such a vast lineup. Donnell Rollins, like it always changes city to city, but every show was so much love because you know all the names that I mentioned. I right. get up there and they're like, oh, you know, a couple of people know who I am, and then I always mm-hmm. tell the audience, I say, listen, if you don't know who I am by the time I get off the stage, you will, because they wouldn't just put anybody on tour with Martin Lawrence, hmm. and the crowd just goes crazy and it's so much love 
from the Lit AF Tour, man. Just one of the most humbling, wide eye opening experiences I've ever had because it teaches you how to perform in an arena which is completely different than doing a comedy club or even a small how theater. Is it? How, I'm curious yeah. about that because, I mean, I know that um, when, God, I think back to the, the shows that I've seen, uh, mm -hmm. comedians in, uh, in arenas, it is, it's rarefied air to be, yeah. shut up, Frankie! <laughs> it's just got real. It's Frankie, got shut up, Frankie! <laughs> I'm sorry, C.T., Mike is a yeah. dog. He's a dog owner. He's a dog. And I am in love with dogs. I don't own a dog. Well, let me I'll, tell you I'll, something. I'll, I'll, I'll airlift dog my dog, dog to you. Uh, that Frankie is cold with it. And he was quiet. He's a chihuahua. <laughs> chihuahua. Uh, so, God, I can't believe I'm trying to think of the. Well, dice. I, 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 I said, well, yeah, yeah. I saw that. I saw uh, way back when. Sorry to bring up yeah. the, the name, Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. That's how yeah. old I am. Mm -hmm. I saw him at the, in the, at the cap of the old Capitol Center. What is the uh. difference between. Because you think. Think of comedy with the brick wall, intimate, yeah. you know, three rows in front of you. You're talking to people. What is the, how do you, how do you do it differently? I mean, it's so uh, here's it's the, a different way. Here's the thing. And nobody ever trains you to do it. It's like literally on the fly job exposure experience. So when you get in front of an arena, right? So in my blessing, there have been 20,000 people when we do these shows. So when you get on stage, you have to realize that when you hit a punchline, your laughs travel to the back of the room first, right? So I'm on stage all the way back here. The laughs go all the way to the back. Then they hit me and then they go towards the middle. Now, before they go towards the middle, you got to be starting up your next joke because a lot of comedians are wow. rapid fire. So they'll say a joke and then it goes to the back of the room and then they start another joke before it comes to the front. So now the crowd doesn't give you the laughter that you want because they're confused. They can't hear you because they're still laughing at the previous thing you said. So it's that a timing thing. Uh, yeah, do you uh, keep score when you're out there? I mean, do you have a particular <laughs> oh, city absolutely. that you say? I mean, of all the towns that we've played on this tour, there's one yeah. uh, particular town that you uh, that you feel the love for. Yeah, man. And here's the thing. I'm so glad you asked. And I'm not saying this just to be saying it. For me, man, Baltimore has shown me so much love since the last time I came here, 2011, when I was at the Baltimore Comedy Factory, is myself, <clears throat> Brandon T. Jackson, and the crowd in Baltimore showed so much love. I've been trying to get back here since that moment because it was a, it felt, Baltimore feels like the cousins that your mom says, all right, now, nah, don't be out all night when you go over there. That, that feels like those things. <laughs> okay, I get that. You know that. what I'm saying? Don't be I in get trouble because somebody's going to tell me. You yes. know, who know your mama? That's what Baltimore feels like for me. And it's so much love that I've been trying to get back, dude. Now, tell me more about Frankie. Now, before we get <laughs> to the next uh, one. <laughs> All right, let me give you your plug, and then I'll tell you about okay. uh, my, my dog. Uh, go see CT, two special. He's going to do one, and if he sells yep. out the uh, the first one, he'll do a second one. Uh, two shows at the Baltimore Comedy Factory. Uh, that's this coming Wednesday, November 24th. Uh, check it out at Team CT on uh, social, this and will uh, sell you'll out. be able to get yeah, there. Yeah, it will it, sell uh, it got to sell uh, out. Uh, tickets are available uh, at BaltimoreComedy.com. Uh, and uh, the, the dog situation is, and I was going to put this, I put this on uh, my show list today. Today, mm -hmm. uh, there, I do live down here in Florida, and I do. Yeah. I, I live in one of those where they, you know, they poop out all the same houses, and it's a small little <laughs> house I have. And I take my dog out in the morning, and mm -hmm. Frankie is chill as far as walking. So I have a Boston Terrier, and I have mm -hmm. a Chihuahua, and I'm walking the uh, Chihuahua uh, with the Boston Terrier, and I don't put the uh, the Chihuahua on a leash because he's oh. old, about twelve years old, so he's long in the tooth for a Chihuahua. He's an and adult. The Boston Terrier is like a pup and so yeah. uh frankie shoots out i leave the the door open that's mm -hmm. how i say frankie you can come out and just he goes slow and that yeah. unless there's another dog and this lady came walking down the street with one of her man cuts as i like to say in the neighborhood <laughs> and she's got her little beagle mutt mix and frankie uh -huh. shoots out the door and runs straight across the street to attack the uh the other uh dog and it's just uh you know they're pain i love my boston terrier i don't yeah. care for the uh, Chihuahua.
To be perfectly what? honest with you, you don't, I don't care like, for the a, Chihuahua. I don't like the Chihuahua. I, I'm I'm kind to the dog. I'm nice to the dog. Cordial. But the dog, but the dog <laughs> is, uh, you know, it, it's very. It, they're just a pain in the ass. Here's I live like an Mike. old man down here. I walk dogs. Mike, There's nothing more emasculating okay. than walking a little dog with a leash, a dog three inches long. It's Mike, not. Uh, it's, you're yes. looking at this the wrong way. And after I say this to you, you're gonna be seeing it different. You're 62 years old. Huge yes. blessing, right? You are looking at this dog. Like he's not also 62 in his mind. You understand? <laughs> you have to look at him like an equal. That's the problem. That's y'all disconnect. Yeah. See, he wants right. the respect of a fellow adult. And you looking at him like right. he's a kid. So if y'all look at each other like, hey, man, let's go outside. Let's check out these young pups. I promise you. <laughs> He will be different. Well, you use the, the word blessing. Let me think. Uh, maybe tomorrow morning when I wake up, I will look down yeah. at Frankie and go, Frankie, you are a blessing. Hey. There you go. And you respect I him. love dogs, yeah. man. You I say that to Frankie, he'll daily. growl. Do you have dogs? Do you have any dogs? And that's the thing. No, man. We had a dog, right? So we just moved into uh, into a bigger spot, but we were in an apartment. And here's the crazy part. So my owners of the, uh, my, I guess you could say landlords of the building at the time were like, hey, no dogs, no pets. And we were like, man, I really want a dog. So here's the crazy part. The owners died, right? So when the, of the, died, of the building said, well, you lived in? Of the building we lived, they died. So I was like, well, <laughs> rules out the window. Right? <laughs> what do you mean, so two of them? They both died, man. I'm like, back was, to What back, was it, like, a murder-suicide or something? It, what happened? Let me tell you. This, so they were older. They were a little long in the tooth, as you should say. Blessings. <laughs> About 80. Blessings to them. Something. Yes. And right. Blessings to them. You know, they were great people. <laughs> and I was like, all right, it's time to get this dog, baby. You understand? I'm in the game. Right. So we get a dog. And we have this neighbor above us at the time. And he's like, hey, you know, the rule is there are no dogs. And I was like, hey, man, that was the rule until the owners died. I don't know if you realize they are no longer with us. The rules out. Who's going to enforce them? They are gone. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, well, you know, I can't have a dog. And I'm like, that's the pr you can. You can have a dog if you want. You can have a cat. You can have anything because the owners are dead. And um we were trying to crate train the dog at first, and then he was barking a little loud. And then uh, the neighbor above us was complaining a lot, mm. and we had to give the dog back. But I love that dog so much, oh. and I want to get another one. But the way these carpets are set up, I refuse to allow myself <laughs> to be training a puppy and poop on these brand-new carpets, man. But I'm going to work uh, it out. <laughs> well, good luck uh, with that. You know, as far as uh, the – now that the tour's over, I'm looking yeah. at your resume here. You've been on uh, – uh, all rise modern family superior donuts insecure so you're doing a lot of tv is that the is that the plan that you want to uh, do more acting and uh, stuff like that well here's the thing man uh when you're a multi a multi hyphenate like you know like they call it i'm acting i'm doing stand up i'm creating online content and you know all of these different things you have to make time for. I enjoy doing television, but I enjoy connecting with my fan base more. I call them my fan base because they're more like my family, the people that support me. And creating the content for them rewards me in a, in a way like none other because the people that are going to be at this show tonight uh, well, I'm sorry, Wednesday night are a lot of the members of Team CT. These are the people who've been watching the videos. They've been, you know, checking me out stand up wise for years or seeing the, the appearances on TV. So it's being able to meet them in person. The only reason I wanted to go on tour was to meet the people that support me in person. I love the shaking hands. I'm like, look, I want to shake hands. I'm fully good. I did everything you're supposed to do. Let me get a picture with y'all. Like just to say thank you, because so rarely do we get the opportunity to tell the people who support us. Thank you. You know? Yeah, I agree. Uh, and, and there's nothing like it. So true. Uh, what I hear from most uh, standups is that it is, uh, uh, you know, even when you're doing TV, getting out there and getting on stage, it, there's nothing like it. And, uh, oh. you know, as I said, I've emceed them, but I, I've never that's that's a rush. And that's yeah. uh, that's to get that fix uh, constantly and doing it as long as you've uh, been doing it. It's got to be an awful lot of fun, I would think. Man, 16 years, man. It'll be 17 in January. I started young i was like i want to be the the young old guy you know the elder statesman that's been doing it for a while but still young but i man, i would really like to see you perform because even seeing you talk now it's like you have such a if you say this stuff on stage you'll kill because mm -hmm. it's just you're naturally speaking you're not like being a character or anything and if I think I'm going to start Frankie, maybe at some uh, small nursing homes down here and, uh, you know, try to work my way. Uh, maybe we do. Like we do a live show. Of, we do. Uh, Mr. Saturday Night when Billy Crystal is the older comic in the nursing home. Yo, that could be you. That's a great reference. 
How about, Mr. Saturday Night is so slept on. It is. I how agree. about that buffet? How about that <laughs> buffet that you get with the thing and the boy comes around and he's got the uh, the eggs are, are not real eggs. They're made of powder. Huh? <laughs> powder. How about that? Uh, but you the, left look, me with uh, no summer. I had no summer. <laughs> <laughs> One last question about Martin Lawrence. You never saw him like throw a chair or anything like that, you know, as far as, uh, you know, the, the high strung uh, headliner is uh, uh, any Martin stories at all? You know, uh, here's I, the know you, I hate to I'll ask, but I have well, to no, ask. I mean, as performers, no, so we all get a little tense before of course, live show. Sure. I get that. Yeah. Yo, Martin Lawrence, man, and because this is the guy, let me tell you about Full Circle. This is the man that made me want to be a comedian. So okay. I would sneak downstairs and watch Def Comedy Jam and watch him and be like, oh, my God, I want to do that. And watching him on his TV show it was very important to go back to acting. I wanted to be just as great as an actor as I was a stand-up comedian because it seemed seamless for him, right? So even going on a road with him was just incredible. So every time I would, I would like, I was like, all right, cool. I'm about to go around Martin. It's about to be crazy. He's going to be super hyped, full of energy. Let me tell you something. Martin is the coolest guy on the planet. He don't get hype about nothing. You'd be like, you be more hyped than Martin. You'd be like, what's up, Martin? Hey, what's going on, man? You'd be like, oh, man, I'm so hyped right now. And he's so cool. He never lost his cool. No. And when he goes out in front of that audience, man, they love Martin because this is somebody we've been watching for 30 years. Mm -hmm. yeah, so this right. dude goes out there. He brings the energy. He's super hype on stage. And he come off and you think he's still going to be hype. You're like, hey, man, that was crazy. Yeah, man. You know, we're having a good time. I'm like, oh, we're back, we're back to cool. <laughs> Hey, is listen, the greatest. Um, Clayton uh, C.T. Thomas, uh, you know, I really, uh, I checked out your, your stand-up. Go to the Baltimore Comedy Factory and check him out. Have a wonderful holiday uh, with you and yours, and uh, uh, I take it you'll be going back to L.A. for uh, Thanksgiving. You'll be around Man, uh, my wife loved is ones. Cooking. She's oh, cooking awesome. while nice. I'm going to be in Baltimore, and when I get, I'm taking a first thing smoking from Baltimore back to L.A., <laughs> Thursday morning, and oh man, it's gonna be phenomenal. I'm hoping you guys have one too, because Thanksgiving can also be destroyed by the flick of the wrong mac and cheese. You understand me? If that I mac understand. and cheese yeah. is not what it's supposed to be, the I holiday understand. is not gonna be fun for nobody. <laughs> so yeah, I'm you know, hoping everybody got somebody in their life to make some good uh, mac and cheese. Really, really a uh, funny guy, and uh, and check him out. And Wednesday night's such a great night. I think you're yeah. gonna do really well. I think you're gonna have to add that uh, second show. Check him out. You can get tickets right now at uh, baltimorecomedy.com for a CT. Really nice talking to you. And uh, you're very, very funny, and I really wish you nothing but the best. And uh, I see you uh, not only with the stand-up; I could see you really in the acting realm doing anything. I think uh, you get you've got that vibe. So uh, you know, please remember us if you uh, yeah. get super famous. Come to okay? DC and see us. Absolutely. We'd love to see you. Yeah, stop by Let the studios deal. and uh, come and see us. Anytime. All right, CT. Thank you, man. Thank, thank, you thank you so much. So much, man. Thank we you. Appreciate you coming on. Take care. Bye. That's Clayton CT Thomas, and uh, he will be at the uh, Baltimore Comedy Factory. That's Wednesday, November twenty fourth. We'll take a short break, and uh, we will be right back on the Mike O'Mara Show every day. The Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Miss one episode, and you miss a lot. Hi, everybody. I'm the candy man. I have a dry skin issue. That's yeah. why I'm mercurized. This is the love power. People the love power? James Bond We're swimming drunk. You take the good, you take the bad. And you take you the above, and then you have the facts of life. The Mike O'Mara Bonus Show is your only chance to get that fifth episode of TMOS every week, and it's sent to your device every Friday. Get a subscription today, or gift one for the holidays. It's another great way to support TMOS. Click that bonus show banner now and get laughing. It's all at MikeO'MaraShow.com. He's got a bump. <laughs> Thank you, Jim Amato. This portion of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by Tommy John. Tommy John? Tommy John. This Black Friday, celebrate softness season <laughs> by stocking up on your favorite Tommy John underwear, loungewear, and pajamas. Uh, when you start your day wearing Tommy John, uh, you're that much more comfortable, so you can do everything better. Shop their Black Friday sale right now and give the gift of comfort to everyone on your list, including yourself. Treat yourself. Treat yourself, Asha. Treat yourself. Tommy John. Uh, Tommy John men's and women's loungewear with over 16 million pairs sold. Give the gift of Tommy John uh, and giving it has become a holiday tradition for families all across the country. Here's a fact. 98% of women and men love getting a gift from Tommy John. That's why Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. Settle down. 
<laughs> Everything that uh, Chummy, Tommy John, Tommy John makes uh, feels sensational against my skin. I love it all. It's like a party and in your pants, Mike. <laughs> you will too. This holiday, make everyone in your family more comfortable with the gift of Tommy John. Tommy John loungewear, Tommy John underwear, Tommy John bras. Plus, it's all backed by Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear. Yes. Or it's free guarantee. Let me repeat that in case you didn't catch that. It's Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. That rolls off the tongue, believe it or not, even though it's a lot of words. Yes. Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. Uh, during Tommy John's Black Friday sale, uh, get 20% off site-wide at TommyJohn.com slash TMOS. Get 20% off for a limited time only at TommyJohn.com slash TMOS. That's TommyJohn.com slash TMOS. See the site for details, people. From the four corners of the World Wide Web and into your digital device, it's what you need to know. This is the homepage. This is the homepage, ladies and gentlemen. We start today with uh, history being made. On Friday, uh, Kamala Harris uh, became America's first female president, sort of. Uh, President Biden underwent a colonoscopy. Uh, so he was put under anesthesia. Uh, when that happens, the vice president is given a full presidential uh, power. Uh, she's given full presidential yeah, power yeah. and she becomes the acting president. This happens regularly and the VP doesn't literally become president, but it's still pretty historic that uh, Harris became uh, the first woman to assume the duties of the president of the United States. Uh, and uh, then she laughed inappropriately. <laughs> there's a, there's <laughs> a sorry, small no, technicality. I, just, I added that myself. I'm sorry. There, Mike, there's a technicality there. It's, it only counts because he did the colonoscopy for pleasure. Yeah, I was I, no, was, I was shocked to hear that report, uh, and and I also was shocked that you have to go under for a cola. I thought you could stay awake. You can do you, a twilight. I ha I've had them both. I've had them when uh, they, uh, you know, I've had them when I was uh, conscious, and I've had them when uh, uh, I've been put out. Recently, all the colonoscopies I have, and I have one every week. People don't realize that about me. <laughs> Uh, they they regiment. knock you out. Well, that's why Part we moved my the regiment. show start time over the summer. <laughs> yeah, because I, I was on my regular colonoscopy exactly, schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, this how all happened on Men's Day, International Men's Day. Okay. So suck it, patriarchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So political. And the joke about Kamala Harris laughing in a program, I don't like her laugh. Her laugh freaks me out. Where yeah. she's like, where she's like, oh hi. <laughs> well, I haven't heard it's it like, yet. I've I haven't seen even it. thought about yeah. it. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's very very uh, it. odd. Let me uh, move on here. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence took the concept of method acting seriously while filming the movie that's coming up that looks really good to me, Don't Look Up, uh, because she got high. Since her character would smoke pot to calm her nerves after learning that a comet is heading towards Earth, Jennifer did too. Quote, I was a real target. I, I love Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. She makes me laugh. Uh, everyone was messing with me, I guess because I was high. Easy to F with. So if Lawrence's eyes look super red in the movie, you can uh, bet it's not movie magic. Oh, and don't worry. She wasn't pregnant at the time, which I guess she is now. Don't Look Up hits theaters. It's got Leonardo DiCaprio in it uh, December 10th, then goes to Netflix two weeks later on Christmas Eve. And Perfect. it's really a movie that I'm looking forward to. We may get Pony's movie review uh, later on with the... Uh, the Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters thing. We'll Ghostbusters. Uh, the power of Adele is upon us. She got this it is compels powerful. you, Mike. <laughs> the power of Adele compels you. The power of Adele compels you. This is power. This is celebrity power right here. She got Spotify to change things so that shuffling the music isn't the default setting when you listen to an album. She said, "Quote: This was the only request I had in our ever changing industry." We don't create albums so much care and thought into our track listing for no reason. Uh, our art tells us start blah, blah, blah. She goes, uh, uh, so she got them to uh, switch that so it doesn't automatically shuffle. It plays the album in the order that uh, the album was She's put together. She's powerful, isn't it? She's very, isn't it? Oh, I guess I got more power than you at Spotify. Spotify. <clears throat> there are probably purists out there that love this. For I, me, I it, it was annoying that Spotify would do that. Yes. But I would just change the settings. But most people don't even touch the app. I love yeah. I love it. I think it is so important. And there are very few people that are making album, album, albums like she does still. And they should. The song should be listened to yes. in order. It throws me when an album is out of order. Well, a new album's 30, isn't it? And it, is, it, isn't it came out last Friday and was available <laughs> uh, right now, right away on Spotify. Unlike her last album, 25, which took over six months. Huh. So, uh, so that's a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, but good for her, isn't it? 
Hitting it. That's it. There you go. Uh, Bob Pishu. Uh, that may, name might not be familiar to you, but uh, is he, he a is Pokemon? An, uh, no. His name is Bob Pishu. P I S H U E is an analyst with transportation analytics. The company is called Inrix. You might have heard of them before. Okay. Uh, they he said traffic won't be as bad as it was in 2019, but the roads are definitely more congested congested than they were last year. Here's Inrix, the company's advice for travelers: uh, leave early, but they get a little more specific than that because that's kind of a no brainer. I was going to say in- a big firm needed to tell you that. <laughs> Inrix found that traffic delays nationwide are expected to be up 40% higher than normal over Thanksgiving. It's going to be, I would imagine, if you're a traveler and you're on the road, it's going to feel like a bit of a shock with what we deal, dealt with last year. Uh, there are ways to beat the road congestion. Pishu says morning departures tend to be ideal, especially now that there are fewer people commuting to work or school in the pandemic. Inrix found that the best time to take off, see, they say morning, but then they give you the real detail, mm-hmm. is after 9 p.m. on Wednesday and before 11 a.m. on Thursday. Mm. That's the way it should be done. If you want to get there and you're driving, Drive late at night, and nobody wants to. But uh, you know that's when what we used the, to do, you should do Thanksgiving in Newport News with Carrie's family. We'd leave at five a.m. on Thanksgiving Day, and you wouldn't see a, you wouldn't see a person on the road. It sucks for for three easy. hours. Yeah. you're you're fine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Nine a.m. is when everybody the peepers are open and the pooping's done and the pancakes. We're have been gonna eaten go and they buy Starbucks, there. then go see Grandma. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, best time to head back before eleven a.m. Uh, let's see. Before noon on Saturday and Sunday. I don't agree with that at all. I think if you're leaving Sunday oh, you're screwed and you're not leaving at the crack of dawn, yeah. you're screwed. So that's my opinion. Yeah, right. And I'm not a corporation that uh, handles traffic. All right? Just thought I'd give it. An Alabama engineer uh, took inspiration from his childhood to uh, break a Guinness World Record for building the world's largest Nerf gun. Uh, Michael Pick of Huntsville. He's a software engineer and a YouTuber. He earned the record by building a version of the Nerf Nerf and Strike Elite Long Shot CS6 that measures 12 feet 6 inches long 300% larger than the original toy. Pick's creation had to be a fully functioning Nerf gun larger than the 6 foot creation of previous record holder Mark Rober. Nice that there are guys out there competing. Pick's final creation launches darts made from PVC pipe, foam, and 3D printed caps. <laughs> wow. The 12-inch darts reach speeds of up to 50 miles oh per my hour God. and can travel a maximum distance of about 250 feet. I am a doof, so I looked for a video. I could not find Was one. Was Charlie uh, excited this. to get it? No, but the sound you just heard was my son dropping everything. <laughs> There you go. I want to talk about his... He might be out there right now. I want to talk about his Christmas present. Because I want to get him something, but I don't know anything about it. And I want to get it cost effective. So I want to make sure I don't spend too much money. It's really important. We'll get to it in a minute. I don't know why I'm whispering. It's a flight simulator. I want to get it for him and for me. But I don't want to buy the... Ridiculous, expensive computer for it. I've seen that. Just, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyway, uh, now a little something, something. Oh, I got to play my thing. A couple recently got married over Zoom, and they never met each other in real life before. The woman is British. The man lives in uh, the United States, and the uh, travel restrictions have kept them from uh, meeting in person. They did the whole thing via Zoom, and I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Matthew Bloom. Thank you very much. <laughs> Very good. We are done with that. Got to uh, take a uh, little break. Uh, lots to get to. Uh, Two thirds of my progeny here in the house. Uh, I took in a major sporting event uh, uh-huh. over the weekend and uh, reached out and got very close to the uh, com- competitors and uh, lots of other stuff. Oh, I'm eating pot gummies. We'll be right back. <laughs> Why? Hey kids, Palmer Betty here. My cousin Billy is done crabbing for the season and is ready to help the elves out down the old TMOS kitchen with the fruitcake futures. But you gotta get them ordered now. The boys are down to the wire. Remember, you're not just getting a delicious Rob's Bee Wax Signature Fruitcake on. You're fundraising to keep the boys on the air. You don't want that show to go by to buy. All that extra stimmy in your pocket, why not upgrade and order to Super Premium and help the boys out? They did not cut corners on ingredients and it's top-notch quality right there. Billy promises he won't put any old bay in them. Get yours now. While you're at it, why not renew 
you your bounty show or send some to your friends. They both make great holiday gifts. Also, don't forget, gotta have them in time to get to the post office so we can get them out to you. So order today before time runs out or you'll be sorry. Time's a fleeting. Cause you can't stop the motion. Thank you, Bailey. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. This portion of our uh, program is uh, brought to you by uh, Ultimate Ears Fits. A word about ears, if you please. Uh, just like fingerprints, no two ears are exactly alike. Uh, that's why your earbuds probably uh, start getting uh, uncomfortable after a while. Yes, Rob Spiewak. These things saved my life on Saturday because I had to have like three scheduled maintenance things done on the car. Mm-hmm. I was in the waiting room at Subaru for like three hours. Had these in the whole time. I forgot they were in there. They're so comfortable. They sound so good. At times, I check to make sure I wasn't playing through my phone. Yes. Because they they just give you the most quality sense. That's the mark of a good fit right it, there. Yeah. It's amazing. It's really The uh, comfort is a big deal. Uh, if, if they don't fit well, they are going to be uncomfortable. That's no good. Ultimate Ears fits true wireless custom fit earbuds from Ultimate Ears are here to uh, change the, uh, the way you wear headphones. These are the world's most comfortable earbuds. You get a guaranteed perfect fit in 60 seconds. They stay put when you're on the go and they feel great. Ultimate Ears fits actually physically mold to your ear for a perfect Perfect fit. Just put them in, connect to the app, and watch the purple LEDs transform the earbuds to your unique shape. And their charge lasts all day. Ultimate Ears Fits are perfect for listening to your favorite shows like this one. <laughs> right up till uh, bedtime, you can play and pause music and answer calls with built-in controls. Plus, the sound is the best. And if you don't love them like we do, Ultimate Ears offers a 30-day money-back guarantee and free shipping, free returns, and a one-year warranty. For a limited time, get 15% off your pair of Ultimate Ears Fits True Wireless Earbuds at ue.com slash fits. Uh, just use promo code TMOS at checkout. That's 15% off with promo code TMOS at ue.com slash fits. They do. Indeed. Uh, so we have, I have Elizabeth, my dad. Elizabeth, are you around? No, they're gone. What about the I don't gummies? Know where they went. You just dropped the huh? bomb on. Yeah, the gummy bomb. Well, okay, so I am a rube when it comes to the idea of social media targeting me with advertising. Mm-hmm. I have had to go back and cancel orders multiple times because I will get that false advertising that Facebook sends out, you know, mm-hmm. where they, they tell you like a company's owned by uh, Kevin Costner. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what they did with these uh, these gummies. I'm not going to mention the name uh, because I, I saw it and then I, it was a lot, a lot more expensive. It's a big problem in that space. Big Dances band. with Wolves brand gummies. Yellowstone. Uh, well, I really, really <laughs> freaked out because it was expensive, more expensive than I wanted. And I went, uh, now I'm not sure he's a so with the company at all and i really felt rubed out i truly did wow these are cbds these are not oh okay you're not getting high you're not getting high okay i don't think well i slept well last night i i took one and i i slept well but i realized as i'm as i've already ordered yes and sometimes when you order something really fast then you go back and research your uh research it that's not the right way to do it and so I did it this way, and I felt so stupid because I went back. And I'm like, oh, my God, there are like 20 different companies attached to this ad, and mm-hmm. I don't know what's what, and I and I get pissed. And so I ended up uh, not going online. I, I actually call their number, and I make a real pissy stink about uh, about not you know canceling a, a my order. What? A pissy stink. Of course. <laughs> I, I was not happy and uh, oh hey, come on in, come on and say hi come on in and say hi there's the there's the we've got my middle child yeah, there's my yeah, middle yeah, child yeah, yeah. Uh, home Woo. safe and sound how are you good, good to see, see you guys yeah, oh, good nice to see you as well put some headphones here you can put my headphones on go ahead right. you just we can hold them right here you can hear all them. right yeah. all right hi, how guys. are you guys We're great. Great. great to see you how was your trip in it was great. It was long. We had about an hour and a half of traffic extra. So Aww. bonus. A 14 hour drive turned into a 15 and a half, but it was fine. <laughs> You're there now. Though. You are You're there. there. Yeah. So let me tell you about this young lady right here, because I am kind of proud if you'll allow me to gloat for just a second. Go right ahead. Uh, <laughs> Elizabeth's uh, job and what she's been working on for most of the summer uh, involves Arlington National Cemetery. And I didn't know all the details uh, until she was uh, going over some photos that she had. But this young lady, uh, when you go, if you uh, if you go, I've always said when you go to Washington, D.C., yes. 
you know, as opposed to seeing the Washington Monument and all that, you, you owe it to yourself to really see people that made the ultimate sacrifice and uh, honor them by going over to Arlington National Cemetery. My daughter has been working at uh, Arlington National Cemetery in the restoration department over there, and she has been restoring the tomb of the unknown soul. Get out, and really? So, uh, oh, the yeah. before and after pictures on uh, what she and her co-workers were able to do. Absolutely amazing. And so if you find your way to Arlington National and you go to the tomb of the unknown, just know that uh, this one here <laughs> How was uh, responsible That's for, That's for, so good. What know, an honor. Yeah. for doing that. Yeah. It's, it's just amazing. So what are your plans with my, uh, I'm taking your beau golfing today. Mm -hmm. Is he nervous? A little, yeah. Okay. <laughs> It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and what are your plans with, uh, and Carla's working, of mm -hmm. course, always working out, just the way it's it should the be. the holidays. It is. You know, those gifts aren't uh, going to buy themselves. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. So what are you going to be doing with Michael? You're, uh, We're currently you're... building, I bought him a little Lego Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, so that's Aww. what we're doing right now. <laughs> nice to see Lego gets its hands into everything. Although that's it's the it. off-brand Lego, so. Oh, it's the off-brand. It's probably made in Jap Japan or something. Yeah, it's called All Tomb right. of the Guy We Don't Know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, get out of here. I love you. Thank you, Bye. sweetheart. Love you. That's Elizabeth. Yeah, that's, she's that working the, on the that... Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. My daughter just got another tattoo, so we're all so proud. <laughs> she it? did? Uh, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm sitting there, and I'm like, well, what does it mean? And... There was a before picture of the Tomb of the Unknown with this uh, hairline fracture right through it. And they repair this and uh, they, they just do an amazing job on all of these uh, these monuments that have to be painstakingly take uh, a brought lot of back to, uh, yeah, forgive to my, Very Forgive, cool. forgive yeah. my ignorance. I believe the, the Unknown Soldier was actually a casualty of World War I. I'm not um, sure. I don't know. But how how old is the? Do you know how old? Did she mention how old the monument itself is? I have no idea. I, I didn't I've ask seen that it. question it's yet. Amazingly, yeah. uh, it's an emotional experience to yeah. see it. Yeah, it's Powerful. it's very cool. Yeah. And the process there was a general. I'm sorry about the lack of detail, but mm -hmm. there was a, a bronze statue of one of these generals that's there also, and re uh, you know restoring with the chemicals that are required yeah. just to get these things back in shape. I'm proud of her. She did a great job, and that's going to be what people a, are going to you know uh, hundreds of thousands of people are going to see that, and I think it's really cool. What a great you know? feeling though as yeah. a father. To know that your daughter is making that type of impact. Yeah, and now it's on. It's a contract job, yeah. so she's on to other greener pastures. Not sure what's uh, going to come next, but she kind of likes this bringing things back to life. And we'll see. Uh, we'll see where that goes. And uh, and we should have the other daughter in uh, in the house uh, Wednesday morning. She's flying into Miami from L.A. She's going to do a little night in Miami. On, of course. Uh, Tuesday night. We'll see what happens. Yes, uh, believe Rob's it or not, the uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier celebrates its or observes its centennial this year. It was dedicated in 1921. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, they were doing That's probably a reason that I they would were think so, uh, doing yeah. all the work. But back to the gummies. Yes. So, uh, so I call them and I got to be kind of a dick with the person on the phone about Hello? it. So, well, I didn't know. I <laughs> No, you're not getting your money I'm back. So sorry. It took me a long yeah. time to answer the phone. There's a total scene at the food court. <laughs> I get pissy with them, and they say, okay, I just talked to my manager. You'll be getting a full refund. And then I get an email that says I've got a refund. And then, obviously, they really did send the gummies out anyway because they arrived. And I'm not sending them back. Oh, so you got them free? Uh, showing that. So yeah. I, I ate one two nights ago. I ate one last night. And I do think maybe I uh, I got a better night's sleep, but I'm not 100% uh, sure. What's the sure. flavor? Uh, you know, like all the fruit flavor for all okay. the gummies. You know, we all they, eat gummies. That's do what you we feel have the calming effect, or you, do you feel that you've? Had I a feel sleep? that I I am not somebody. All right, let me, I'll give you the tell, Oscar. Okay. When I'm sitting there in my chair and I get halfway through Succession, which is now my go-to favorite sure. show, watch the last and night. I and I turn it off and uh, go back. I'll go back today to watch the second half of it. Mm. That means something. That means that uh, there's in. obviously yeah. uh, a little oh. tell with the uh, with the gummies, and I sleep uh, straight through. So that's pretty cool. And I don't feel any ill effects today other than a total lack of motivation to work. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's that. You did come in and tell the world, I don't even want to be here today. Yeah. <laughs> I did, which is what I just realized. I just, you know, 
We can be flapping our gums and figure stuff out on the show, on the fly. Yeah. I just realized, yes, I'm going to put them away. Uh. It's removing any any work ethic that I have. And I have a good work ethic. And I'm very, very disappointed. Yeah. I, have a, I, have a, I have an okay work ethic. Oscar just drew an amazing correlation that none yes. of us saw coming. Yeah, That's what it was. Yeah. And I came, man, I'm really, uh, you know. I am not shocked. Mother. But there's no, the, the, the high factor is not in there. If there was just a touch of that, I'd be okay with that too. You right. Because then I'd eat one right before we taped the show. Yeah. You should try it on an off work day and see how you feel the next day. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, you know, this is a work day and I, I won't, I won't eat one take tonight. Three, I my, promise. Take three of them before the parade on Thursday and watch yeah, the parade okay. on TV. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of that, why did you have to bring up parade? Yeah. God, oh, oh I'm sorry. Jeez. Oh, geez. I mean, it's just, you know, I didn't want to come in and be heavy about it, but man, oh man, it's just... Oh God! There have been these little stories that just affect yeah. me uh, so much. I think we everyone, watched. My mom raced down and shared the the, the news. I was like, "Why do you?" So. And I looked on my phone. She was absolutely right. Tragic. Yeah. Christmas parade. I know. I know. What's Brutal. driving a car through? I'm sorry, guys. This didn't happen when I was a kid. I don't remember hearing stories about people driving into a Christmas parade. We have become less sensitive to one another. I believe that we need to fix the people that are broken and we need to be more empathetic. I really do. I think that uh, that's essential. I don't know uh, how just you can to fix them, though monstrosities out Hope. there you know you know people and this is on the heels of watching that uh, fossil diane sawyer interview the uh those kids from that horrible couple that had 13 kids yeah, yeah. chained to beds and stuff like that and how one of these brave young ladies who is also absolutely stunningly beautiful was able to escape from the house and uh they got these people locked up for mm -hmm. life thank god Good. but uh yeah it's just yeah man's inhumanity uh to man uh you know i'd like to give them all a bunch of gummies i really would all the bad people <laughs> You know, Make sure just, you get uh, the Kevin Costner brand. Yes. The Only the Kevin best. Costner yeah. Celebrity we'll endorsed. <laughs> uh, we'll come back. Uh, I want to talk to the boys because uh, uh, we've got uh, everybody making their plans, winding down, and uh, it is a holiday week, and uh, oh. we will not be giving you uh, what kind of stuffing recipes that you need on the Mike <laughs> O'Berry show. We're just here, and uh, yeah, it's just a chill show. Man. <laughs> Can we get some Funyuns down there, please? <laughs> we'll be right back. Time is running out. You only have until this Friday to order a holiday must-have. A genuine Spiewak family fruitcake. Baked with a flavor to savor. Every cherry is merry. Every orange peel is real. Packed, packed with, with three, three kinds, kinds of nuts. nuts. It's a typhoon of taste. A tsunami of spice. A hurricane of holiday happiness in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Act now and get the deluxe package or the super premium package. That comes with a hand-signed card and a one-of-a-kind collectible. Purchase one, two, ten, or buy them by the truckload. Act now because they only have until this Friday, Friday, Friday to order. You better hurry. Don't get left out in the cold. Every fruitcake must be sold. Be a holiday hero and help support TMOS. Hurry and order today. These fruitcakes are insane. Thank you. Wow, that stopped. It did that was stop just right a, away. rather rather abrupt. <laughs> hey, have you ever noticed how difficult and confusing it can be to start investing? There's so many barriers. One single share can cost a mint. Such confusion. Oi. Oi. Uh, Oi. That's why Oscar and Rob joined public.com. They uh, can start small with slices of shares and invest in what they believe with any amount. Exchange insights with a community of investors and build a portfolio with confidence. When you invest on public Public.com. You're never alone. Connect with investors from all walks of life to learn new ideas and gain confidence. Choose from thousands of stocks and ETFs along with 10 popular cryptocurrencies. And Public.com takes your privacy seriously. They don't participate in payment for order flow. That's uh, when brokerages sell your trades to third parties. Instead, Public Rec, I'm sorry, Public.com, I always make that mistake, uh, routes your trades to the exchanges directly. So there's no middleman. Public.com. Invest with confidence. Start investing with as little as a dollar and get a free slice of stock up to 50 bucks when you join Public.com today. Visit Public.com slash TMOS to download the app and sign up. That's Public.com slash TMOS. Uh, valid for U.S. residents 18 plus, subject to account approval. See Public.com slash disclosures, not investment advice. And now all I have in my mind yes. is it may Maybe I'm really not quite motivated, you know, I, like in a moment I'll do a, I'll come back from a break and I'll have a white towel over my shoulder or something. <laughs>
<laughs> now, now, yeah. now. I no, but, but do you God. feel you got to read all your news stories? You ha- look mm-hmm. the family. The CBD's in your head. It's yeah. just the family's there. That's all it is. It's yeah, family. and it's and it's the holidays. It's the turn. It's the holiday turn. I know the holidays yeah. technically more, start. I swear to God, I didn't start thinking about this until Oscar. Well, brought it up. you know what's great about is that it right it's not like pot causes paranoia. No, nah. no, no, <laughs> no. I am. I. It, it's meaningless. I'm super chill. I am really super chill. I do not. I, I feel I don't come in and get particularly nervous for a show. Uh, but you but have, I you have an edge to you, and pot doesn't make. Do I have an edge today? Excuses. No, no, it's a. Uh... It's been sanded down. Yeah, you know what it is? Yeah, Even Steven. Yeah. I need that edge. That's yeah. why I'd never be like, yeah, that's, good. that's a good point, Oscar. Yeah, you'd never hear me with that. <laughs> Agreed. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so your family uh, your family is home in, in, in its entirety? The, yes. The Mountaineer and the uh, Ram yeah, uh, from he got, VCU? He got in um, late after I went to bed on Friday night, and he slept until I woke him up. At- what is the deal with his departures on uh, Fridays coming back well, and because getting Kay, to your house well, late it was, at night? It was as soon as Carrie could leave work to go get him. because it was. Oh, a, she's got to fetch him. Up, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't, so, ha- doesn't uh, have to. Doesn't have to. Just but she be. chose to, and so. But I went. When to bed. does he get a car down there? Uh, maybe next semester, and absolutely next year. Okay, all right. So, and that's then, a that, hassle. Yeah, it is a hassle. I and, don't know what my. I might not have seen my folks if I didn't have like catch uh, my father's yeah. old beater. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we used to do that at yeah. AU too. Yeah, Those were the rides. drag trips when we'd drive from Washington D.C. Yeah. up to Connecticut, Ugh. and uh, what is that's that? when like, we dropped that's like eight uh, hours. Yeah, it's eight hours, and one time I had five guys in the car in my, uh, I think it was my Plymouth Satellite. Was it my Plymouth Satellite? I'm not sure. Yeah, I had it in my Plymouth Satellite, and I dropped uh, Mark Fiedelholtz off in the like the worst part of the Bronx because <laughs> he was a last minute. Come on, man. Come on, man. Put me in. Hey, look, man, yeah. he dropped me off in New York. Anyway, right off the highway. I dropped him off right off the highway. Got over the GW. Put him right in. Thanks, Put dude. Put him right in the Bronx. <laughs> yeah. Jerome Avenue. I, sh- yeah. I, I, I S you not. I dropped him off on Jerome Avenue. Wow. Yeah, because he was such a nudge, such a pain in the ass. And then I dropped the other guys off in like Norwalk, Stamford, mm-hmm. New Haven, and then made my way uh, back home. And uh, it was uh, Close. It's a drag. You know? Robert's on the end of uh, Hell Week for getting inducted into his uh, fraternity. And so one of the things is that they they make them stay up and do things. So he was so totally How exhausted. long is the pledge? The pledge has been all semester, Pretty hasn't much, it? but he'll be inducted before Christmas. He's in. He's in. So that's, <laughs> He's that's, in. that's what means. You make time. it sound like it's an accomplishment. Well, I'm just it's glad really it's done. Not. I'm glad it's done. It's Ivy what, League <laughs> University. I didn't want to <laughs> make it mike i apologize i didn't want to make it sound like it was an accomplishment i just wanted to be glad that it was <laughs> done like he uh, so, passed the bar yeah so anyway all right so what is the latest on his uh other you know world of college besides being in a fraternity he is not going to get kicked out he's not going to be on academic probation we're not going to be sending out any uh announcements of was this. he close to, no 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 uh, he never was he never was but it's just he's not going to be on a roll i know this and he will be taking a class. How, how do you how do you know that? Yeah, he just told me. He said uh, we're looking at uh, we're looking at some C's this uh, this semester, and uh, he's going to take a class over winter break to bring that GPA up. And uh, also, the other big news is that the uh, what was that, Oscar? I just it's it's harder to raise your GPA over the years. So starting off of that block is not I know. necessarily. Maybe you could offer some pointers start. to him. Well, I, I've been saying this the whole time. I said, and I told him this, too. Enough. Yeah. Enough. Um, also, the other big news is that uh, he and Tori are on a break. So he's no longer with Oh, the gal. girl? Yeah. Because there was so much fraternity stuff going on that she was saying, what about me? Mm. What about me? And he says, well, I guess not about you. Let's... He Let's literally in picked this. his bros over hoes. It, well, I don't know that I would call Brothers. that. He, what he does, he chose his fraternity over a romantic no. pursuit. Sorry. Well, is everything all right? Is everything okay yeah, with him? He seems, he seems seem... okay. He seems okay. No, I'm talking about you. Well, no, no, not really, because I wanted him okay, to Okay, not... well, talk to us. Come on. Yeah. What's going on? All I did when all I talked to him about all summer long is you got to do well your first semester. You just got to do it. You well, just got I didn't to. do well my first semester. Yeah, well, I did. I mean, freshman I did. year. Julia did. I didn't. And I know, and I said- I had and, to raise my GPA to transfer out And of, I explained uh, Marist. to him, I said, and I told him before he screwed this up, I said, you know, it's hard to raise it. What's easy to do is maintain it. 
That's what you got to do. And yeah, but it, it, now that the fraternity stuff is over, it is time to focus on the, down uh, and focus. the academics. The classes and seem to get harder as you get deeper into college. They don't well, get I easy. see. I, did, I, I, I tell the story about that uh, intro to philosophy course that I took, and I was terrified. And I called my po- fo- folks saying, I don't think I'm college material. I swear <laughs> to God, all that's true. I don't know. I had a low one, and I got it up to uh, like a 3-2, three, 3-3, three, three, uh, you know, which was – not what it should be you know i mean it's just a it's it's i think this is the advice i'm going to impart to robert and i'll pass it along and you can pass it along to him is having a plan you know i mean having a plan uh that's the that's the key that's the key and i think that is for the biggest difference i see with uh the mbas um and the 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 super uh, bright people and well educated people that they all have that they they got their chess moves like five like a destination. five places yeah. down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. And they know where they're going to go, what they're going to do, and how it's going to work, and what and how much work is necessary to get there. And that's uh, you know, uh, fraternity is fun, and it's right there. And, and it's, it's going to be an important part of his life. I don't discount that. Yeah, no. And he'll my my brother in law has uh, to this day. Uh, he's he's not north of seventy, and his fraternity brothers are his main friends. Yeah, uh, for life. That's the you know that's really that that's a good thing. But you know, having the you know, where do you want to be? Does he know what he wants to measure in yet? He does. It's uh, something sports medicine or sports therapeutic stuff like that. He doesn't have okay. the exact track ready. But also, you're only allowed for the first two years, first four semesters, take like three classes that apply directly to that yeah, because they know the, he's taking the uh, yeah, the core classes yeah, now, exactly so i get it and so things well, are switch. I, I wish him all the best and you know what it's great to have him here and to get him back on a regular sleep schedule i did get him up long enough on saturday to go to jimmy's and then we came home and he went back to bed can i give you some advice you can really take home to him and i'm not i'm not this is not a joke just tell him it's okay to ask for help if you go to the professor and say, is there a study group you know of or maybe mm-hmm. something? That's very it's valid. Not, that is not hard. Ask for help. And if the, the professor Professors, thinks you're into as, it. as a rule, they want to help yeah, you. Yeah, they'll they do. tell you, yeah. hey, this group meets on so-and-so mm-hmm. night or there might be something going on here. Mm-hmm. That's it. And, and why did sex. they break up? Why did they uh, break up? Because she was not getting enough attention because of fraternity-based activities. He oh, said it was so leading to a lot of arguments. Yeah. So he's going to frat parties. Yeah. Events, okay. Mike. I think they're events. Without her. Yeah. I think he had to focus because, well, when you're a pledge, you have to work the parties. You yeah. Know? Like okay. do things. So. All right. Well, I mean, he got through it. That's the yeah. most important and I thing. Said, how, about, mean, how about your other daughter? My, oh, she's great. She's fantastic. I saw her yesterday. I mean, your daughter. Yeah. So. she. Uh, no, she came home. Um, I didn't realize she was going to come home for the whole week. This is exciting. I think she may come by Podcast Village tomorrow, so we may have her on the show, depending on whether or not she can oh, r- get herself wow. out of bed. I love that. And so um, she is doing great. Uh, we were surprised to find out she got another tattoo, but, you know, at, at, after two Big, or three. small? Uh, medium sized on her stomach it turns out i've not seen it i've only heard about it so carrie came downstairs this was funny she said uh do you see your daughter and she uh Ooh. indicated her stomach i said what pregnant she said no more permanent than that mm. it's a tattoo mm. you so. didn't see it no i didn't see it did we, you ask to see it well no because i heard about it after she went out to a concert last night so i've not seen her since i found out oh about you haven't tattoo. seen her yeah All right no i okay. saw her before but i didn't see the tattoo Will did you carrie have- describe it uh no she didn't mm. Because I just, you know what, I said, whatever. I I was not in the mood yesterday. No? Well, not is, in the mood. Well, everything's coming up uh, aces for you, it looks like. <laughs> and it turns out we're going to have three dogs for Thanksgiving, which is nice. We're having uh, my mom, whose dog was invited, uh, because when my mom brings her dog, then she doesn't have to rush home. So that's nice. So the, we'll have uh, Alinus and Lulu. <laughs> and then I found out we're going to have Luna. Are you okay? Are you all right? This you don't sound, is falling you don't apart. Sound, you don't sound man. happy. You well, sound Mike, like it's, a, it's you the sound holidays. Like it's, I mean, it doesn't, nothing you've told me is anything dire. No. Really? No. Right. Well, Everybody sort of. GPA. She can get that tattoo removed. No big deal. Yeah. We can have a bull mastiff over for Thanksgiving. Sure. It doesn't take up much room. Hope that's, it the, that's the dog you like, I right? I love it unless it has the nervous stomach. Because when a, when a Mastiff has a nervous stomach, everybody okay. gets nervous. 
Uh, or how about you? Are you uh, are you? Okay oh, I love with, this. Uh, my, my my family's coming in um, tomorrow. My brother, my brother, my sister in law, and my nephew get in. Little Sebastian. How's his GPA? I'm sure he's. Uh, you know, he's he's at some private uh, private school that does uh, no grading. It's just a holistic at this point, right? Oh, it's the, it's the All preschool right. before they get into car. Uh, oh, I get it. Okay, yeah. no problem. And then um, he and then, got an O for outstanding. And then we have <laughs> the LA contingency coming in on wednesday and they're doing a bit where they're going to pittsburgh to see their friends first so they'll fly in wednesday morning and then they'll drive they lived in pittsburgh for yes, a while yes. yeah I remember and then they'll that. drive from so pittsburgh. everybody's gonna be together mm-hmm. they'll be together and and what i love mike is i don't have to worry about a thing as i told my mom yesterday as she was asking me about you know cakes and this and i said mom this thanksgiving I just want to be left alone. And she looked at him. She goes, what's wrong with you? I said, the whole family's coming here. Ask them. They owe you things. You That's arrive a great point. half an hour before That's dinner. That's what I said. Done and deal. then hang out and yes. split or stay over yeah. if you feel like it, yes. whatever. What you do is you take an Uber over, get there 15 minutes before dinner, and you've already been drinking. My mom Hi. literally said, what time are you going to get here to help get started? I said, I'm going to get here. Well, I said, what time is dinner? And she says, Three o'clock. And I said, well, that's more like lunch dinner, but okay. We'll be here at 2.30. That's the man. <laughs> Perfect that's way to do yeah. it. Uh, I will be having uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's almost 11. perfect. I will be having Ooh. 11 people. I Not, sh- nine I, is better than I, 11. I should add that my father has arrived. He is He's back here. in town. He arrived yesterday. I did see him. Is he at a hotel or is he at the house? He's at the house, and there was a weird energy as soon as we walked in because my mom didn't tell us that my dad had arrived. And I walk in, my mom had all the lights dimmed low. I was like, <laughs> I was like mom. Darth Vader has I said, arrived. Mom, are you okay? And she's like, tu, 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 tu papá ha llegado. And I said, Dad's home? And she goes, Si, sí, está arriba. He's upstairs. And I said, uh, Oh, now this all makes sense. You're in mourning. From your freedom. <laughs> <laughs> so you lit a candle right, and left? That's yeah, so awesome. that's fantastic. In morning. Oh my God. I love that. Uh, that's well, everybody's together. Yeah. That's what really, really yeah. uh, counts. I want tomorrow to find out about that tattoo. I'm okay, just curious. We'll find out. Know, we'll find out. On her stomach. And, uh, you know, without, not to me, it's your daughter, I know, but yeah. what location of the stomach's significant in those situations, too. We'll be right back, everybody. Don't be gross. Stop it! <laughs> KTMOS Country driving you loco on the Cattle Drive to Work show. Good morning, America. We had your daughter on this show. It's me, <laughs> Chuck nice. Wagon on Spiewak County's best country. Playing the country hits while you're spraying your stinky pits. Have you ever thought about being a KTMOS talking head? Well, have you? Well, partner, it's easy to do. Just drop us a note at Rob at Mike O'Mara show.com. That's Rob with two B's, doodah. Tell us why you'd be a great talking head and be sure to include your phone number and don't forget your name. Oh, what's my name? Fuck you, that's my name. Here's Buck Owens. You don't know me, but you don't like me. You don't know me, but I... Hey, I want to take this opportunity uh, with our friends, uh, Mark Livingstone and company at Cornerstone First Financial to wish every single one of them, as our friend CT says, blessings for a happy and healthy Thanksgiving. Cornerstone First Financial, uh, Mark Livingstone and people uh, over there are just so great at handling your refi or your mortgages. Uh, Please do that. And uh, I have a uh, freeze here where I'm having trouble. What's that? Do we have their phone number? written down anywhere guys i can I'm bring it up in a to, second uh, yeah no hold problem. on a second i uh, i'll get it for you in just a Mark, second here Joe. i got it i got it i got it no everybody. problem at all everybody uh they, they, look they they've been uh local Doug. advertisers that uh help us out and they do national business of course around the country but it's really really a special relationship we've had with them for uh some time and they do great work because we have all taken the opportunity to use cornerstone in our financing and they do a great job because uh they got their own uh moolah and uh, they can help you out and uh, rates are you know going to uh, really increase somewhere down the road uh, rates are down now the fed will absolutely need to raise them so please take advantage and uh, and go see my friend mark livingstone and his wonderful team over there or give him a call 202-625-1221 that's 202-625-1221 or cornerstonefirst.com you ready to go to sound town let's go there let's go to sound town everybody Welcome to sound town 
There it is. That's Soundtown, ladies and gentlemen. Mike, I just got a great email. <laughs> He's going to be doing more. I got a, yeah, He'll be doing <laughs> yes, more. Yes, yes. I got a, a great email from Clayton Thomas. He says, thank you so much. I had an amazing time, and you guys are dope. Mm. So that's awesome. Maybe he's talking about your That's dumbest. good. <laughs> well, that's good. Dope is good. That's good. That's good. It is good. And uh, thank you, a Twitch and Sheila Kenny, his amazing publicist, for making that oh, happen. Sweet. Now, did you see the video of LeBron James getting ejected? I did. Oh my gosh, this, this is great. wild. This is and the audio is even great. What happened is there was a, a rebound after a, a free throw, and he elbowed. He you didn't really see it on TV, but I saw it on Twitter. He elbowed Isaiah Stewart in the in the eye. And drew blood, and the fight was nuts. Tonight, it's their number one guy, Jeremy Grant. Uh oh, uh oh, Stewart and LeBron. Stewart is hot, and everybody's coming out now. Now, this is ridiculous. Yeah, he must have caught an elbow or something, but oh, yeah, he's, he's got a lot of blood streaming from the side of the eye. Look, here goes Stewart. <laughs> Are they telling people to stand yeah, I think he's yeah. a little upset. It was along the free throw line on the free throw, and he's still trying to get loose. <laughs> he is knocking over, I and mean, he's out of the game without question. I mean, this it's is like he's running through the line. That's nuts. That's just yeah, crazy that's, right that's now. That's just crazy. That's crazy right now. Or you could look at the face and the blood pouring his elbow and down his the hand. face of Isaiah Stewart. The amazing part is right after that, Bill Butters came in. <laughs> <laughs> now Smith wants a piece of Butters. Oh, my God. But it was Stewart nasty. was like out of his mind and uh, bleeding. Anyone would be. Yeah. It was, it got him, he got, got him not only did he get his eye, he got his lip, too. Yeah. Wow. A lot, of, a lot of blood. Now, speaking of basketball, Mike, I know you're a Shaquille O'Neal fan. Do I you love know Shaquille. that he Shaquille. turned down a pretty major film role? Really? Yes. He was supposed to be the big guy in the Green Mile. Green Mile. That was my role in Green Mile. I turned it down. They wanted to play the the down south African American guy during slavery. You know what I mean? I didn't want to play play that role. But the guy who played it did a wonderful job. He's no longer with us. He's, he passed away. Michael Clark Duncan did an excellent job. So I think I made the right decision because he he did way better than I I, I could have done. But I got offered that role. I think Shaq could have played that role. Uh, yeah, but the the, the role. Uh, what was the name of the actor that uh, Michael played? Clark Duncan? Michael Clark Duncan was, uh, you know, he, he, that movie's not the same movie without him. So mm, I, it was amazing how he did. People are stupid. Count on it. And they get so excited in San Diego over the weekend on the freeway. An armored truck did not fasten their back door. It swung open, and what flew out all over the freeway? Money. And people, I saw this. And people are thinking, hey, free, free money. money. They're what so were the do- I didn't get a chance because I saw it with the sound off. What were the, what were the do- denominations of uh, the bills? Were they like 20s or were they dollars? I think they were, they were mostly dollars? 20s, but the thing is, okay. is that these people don't get to keep the money. Here's an eyewitness and a lawyer explaining why these people are under investigation. People are celebrating and saying it's cash, it's cash, and they're running around and they're just grabbing them with both hands. Everybody was getting along, no problem. Everybody was really happy and excited. People get the wrong idea. They think finders keepers. They might think possession is nine-tenths of the law. They've heard that colloquialism somewhere, but that's not the law. That's not the law, Mike. It's so they, not... uh, yeah. They're I, trying I probably... to find the people that kept the cash if yeah. they haven't turned it in yeah i probably feel the same way if i saw yeah. like 75 dollars under my car or something like that let's go. It, <laughs> let's go if you're on a road trip you're like this is a finder keeper actually yeah. I, I had a thought about it if i was driving and saw the money through the air what i would do is i'd start my wipers because <laughs> the wetness of the wiper fluid would make it would stick, stick to the, the money yeah, exactly. and then you're then you're not even out of the it's car genius exactly yeah that's yeah, how fantastic. you do it that's you didn't look. take it it rode with you and mm-hmm. my windshield has never been cleaner <laughs> <laughs> Oscar, I pulled this for you because no one cares the American Music Awards were last night. Yes. However, they did stage a reunion on the stage. J-Lo is so great. I love that new song of hers from the movie uh, with uh, with Owen Wilson. Mm-hmm. Well, I, she's, love, I mean, she's always great. I just love J-Lo. You've had for a long time. But mm-hmm. uh, for Oscar, how about New Kids on the Block and New Edition? Ooh. Trading hits on stage. <sighs> I hate uh, the fact. I know, Mike, this is not for you. It's for me. Right. It's not for me. It's, it's for him. Yeah. All right, here we yeah, go. Yeah. What are they, 70 now? Yes. Right. So. Old Men on the Block. There we go. And Old Edition. Bobby Brown. 
Yeah. 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 Remember this, Mike? Yeah, oh, this is a hit. If Bobby Brown wasn't such an a-hole, I could enjoy this more. See, Oscar this. loves this, and you probably associate it with the death of Top 40 Radio, which is what it is. It's just horrible music. Luckily, I was able to compress it, but you had people that watched it had to watch it. But I'm chill about it because I had uh, the gummy last night. <laughs> Don't you want me to hear? I'm really thinking about that. I am really thinking that I have that demeanor today, and uh, I might have to stop them because I'd rather, you know, I think I would have been more vocal about the, that particular amount of music. Mike, I, you should either take none or more, but I think you're in a soft spot right now. It's interesting. It might help yeah. your game on the golf course. That I will report back. Mm -hmm. Unless he yeah. falls asleep in the cart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's your shot, Mike. I'll report <sighs> back to you. Yeah. Oh, I went to an LPGA event yesterday. The uh, CME Championship oh, that they wow. have down about 20 third. minutes from my house. Yeah, that's uh, great. <laughs> it, the, the women uh, play from the tips of yeah. the uh, of the golf course. They are... They're so much longer and stronger and better and talented and better putters and just precise. And I've never seen anything. I mean, the, I think maybe 15 years ago I went to an LPG uh, a event and uh, they're so much better. And uh, so I said, Michael, if you stand by the rope when they're coming off the uh, the green there or the tee, you put your hand up, they'll give you a high five. And this marshal douche says, well, they really normally don't do that. I said, Michael. And I said, right in front of the marsh, I said, Michael, I've been to these things. Yes, they do. And like, mm. I said, yeah, hmm, power trip, volunteer, <laughs> your moment of power. By the way, I guess uh, I guess the guy was wrong when Lexi Thompson high-fived my son. Okay? Thank you very much. You know what How that Marshall that? needed? <laughs> he needed a what? gummy. <laughs> yeah, a gummy. Yeah, 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 taking a fistful of them. Here, yeah. chill out. Kevin Costner the power I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I take the Julie Inkster gummy. He owns the company. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm not just a client. <laughs> <laughs> it ought to be good then. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I don't usually call on you. Do you have the Make Good Choices tape handy? The Make Good Choices? Yeah. I have it right here. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Do you want it right I now? Would, yeah, if you could for an example. Uh, okay. Make Good Choices! This is the lady that embarrasses her son mm. when he drops her, him off at school. This is We close with this. He got this some is the lady who embarrasses her son when she drops him off at school. That's right. And so he, the son, got some revenge this week because they've been they've been gaining followers on social. So this okay. is what he did. I love you. I love you too. I hope you have a marvelous day. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I love you. Hope you have a great day. Don't forget to put on your adult diapers when you get to work so you don't have another accident. Love you. I love you. I don't hear anything he's saying. He said, don't forget to put on your adult diapers when you get to work so you don't have another accident. <laughs> he yelled it across that same school courtyard. Can you play it again of now course, and turn it up yeah. a little yeah. bit, please? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I love you, too. I hope you have a marvelous day. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I love you. Have you have a great day. Don't forget to put on your adult diapers when you get to work so you don't have another accident. I love you. I love you. And I love that he closes with, I love you. Bye. That is your trip to Soundtown. So long. Oh, that's fantastic. We have a thingy for Soundtown here. I think we do. Uh, yes. There we go. Now leaving Soundtown. Please there come again. That's it. Now leaving Soundtown. And uh, Rob's going to have fun with the, the, the intro to that. I don't know why I'm thinking about the fact that gummies are affecting me. That's like, I was better at the beginning of the show Mike, than I am right now. You know right that now. we've Something's only done wrong. 62 minutes. Why are you ending the show? I don't know. Something's wrong with me. <laughs> I don't want to mess with that. Our thanks to uh, C.T. Clayton C.T. Thomas will be appearing at the Baltimore Comedy Factory Wednesday, November 24th. You can get your tickets at uh, Team C.T. on social, or you can get it at BaltimoreComedy.com. Great guy. Very nice very talking nice to him. Very nice fellow. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with a, another show as we uh, head down the road to Turkey Day. I love you. Uh, for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, this is Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. 420. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You look at the miserable globalists. You look at people like Bill Gates and you look at people like... 
Mark Zuckerberg and the rest of them. They are miserable slaves of Satan. And we pray for them and hope that the Holy Spirit can still touch their soul. Make good choices.